All right. We are back in business. Chest. Chest is on the chopping block. And I have no remorse swinging this axe of a workout and just freaking decapitating him. So, really all I'm trying to say, I'm hyped up to hit chest. In terms of heavy pressing, I am getting close to that, you know, comfortable with a lot of weight range of recovery. Uh, how long ago was it when I pulled my chest? Was that... It couldn't have been more than a month. Definitely not more than a month ago. Maybe three weeks? Was it four weeks? I, I can't tell you. Either way, obviously day one, no more pressing. But it's been long enough. Took some time off. Did a couple of ease into level workouts, which this may still be one of them. Right, I'm not just going to jump up to the 180 pound dumbbells or something crazy. Actually, the most I've ever done on dumbbells was one, eh, pretty much 150s. I did 175s once. That was too heavy. I did the same thing that I did in the left pec on the right one. Minor pull. Had to had to toss them down like a total fool. Yeah. <clears throat> Better off to use uh, moderate weight responsibly and go hard with it than push it past your limit and tweak something. And uh, I think I may need to hear that advice more than you do. But either way, chest, incline bench, maybe a... <sighs> yeah, incline bench, incline smith, cables, being either cable flies or cable presses, machine press, and uh, pec deck. That's pretty much all there is for chest, you know? And I have no issue approaching chest in a very simple manner. I've got no problem with the chest day. That could be like four sets of incline bench followed by three sets of cable flies. If I feel like I hit everything, it was a good lift, I'm fully pumped, I'm really fatigued, then that's a good chest day in my book. But, of course, I do like to change it up every couple of, uh, every couple of lifts. Though the basic framework is usually about the same. Heavy pressing followed by squeezing movements, maybe stretch, squeezing focused movements. Uh, in terms of the yawning, because I'm always yawning in these, for one thing I'm just kind of sleepy, it is a little bit late, but that kind of brings up an interesting point, right? You'd think that in a bulk, since I've got so much, I'm taking in so much food, I should be, you know, full of energy, right? But it's, I mean, this may just be for me, but it's kind of the opposite. I feel much, let's just say, much more energetic, per se, when I'm dieting down in a calorie deficit, right? When I'm cutting, and then just due to the nature of that, since I have more free time, because I'm not sitting around in front of a bowl of food for, you know, 45 minutes at a time, it just kind of makes me want to do more shit. But in a bulking context, you know, taking in a boatload of calories every day, as often as I can, this is what I want to be doing right here. Just kind of half asleep, half awake, <laughs> you know, just resting. But in a bulking context, I mean, that's the way to do it as much as you can, at least. So that's kind of uh, a little bit of a take there. Something about having to deal with all those calories. <sighs> just makes me a little more lethargic. So just a little bit of insight into my kind of, let's just say energy levels during a bulk and during a cut. Now that does not apply to the lift. Of course, pre-workout plus just general excitement for it. The lift is always good, bulking or cutting. I mean, just kind of day-to-day, whatever. I'm uh, probably much more inclined to want to go out and like, I don't know, do whatever if I'm dieting down than if I'm bulking up. I feel like I've got a low, what's the word I'm trying to think of? My, um, I'm trying to say I'm much more inclined to try to chill at home in a bulk just because I want to be close to where the food's at. And I want easy access at all times. 
that's pretty much all I got, man. You know, I actually... One more thing. One more thing pre-chest. So, I, uh, I saw a TikTok that was bringing up how I was ripping on partying in college. Which... Yeah, I, I stand behind that pretty strongly. Look, I'm not going to say it's going to kill your gains. Of course, if I'm giving advice 99% of the time, it's in a muscle growth, progress, you know, consistency context about lifting. And I mean, you got to think, what's going to be better for you? Or what are you going to feel, even just on a short-term, next-day basis? Are you going to feel better if you got a good night's rest and you get to have a good lift? Or are you going to feel better waking up like shit, maybe in somebody's out, someone else's house who you don't know, and then you got to deal with all the mayhem that you may have caused because you were, you know, blackout drunk? Look, man, I'm not you. I'm not your dad. You're in control of your life. But, I don't know, you're not going <laughs> to... You're not going to catch, like, a... Drunk Sam TMZ uh, news clip of me like fucking passed out on the sidewalk. And I'm a little bit spoiled because for me, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about how, I mean, like kind of successful bodybuilders, they'll bring up like, you know, I didn't want to go out and party. I didn't want to, you know, I, I, I wasn't drinking. I wasn't socializing. I just stayed in my little bubble. And I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to make those sacrifices. <laughs> So, for me, I'm a bit spoiled because I'm kind of always on my best behavior, you know, because I don't really go out and drink or party or anything like that. It's just not my deal. So, in a way, that kind of helps me because it's not really a, <laughs> it's not really a sacrifice for me. But if it is for you, then I'm not saying there's like a cut and dry, like you shouldn't be doing that and you should just be in the gym grinding. You know, that's not a rhetorical question. You've got to make that decision for yourself. Everybody needs a good work, fun, balance. But if you kind of know, like, oh, man, I really haven't been doing much this last week. I've just been fucking going out. I think for the most part, people would agree it's probably better to be a bit more productive. Um, but that's up to you. That is up to you, man. So, all I'm really trying to say is in a muscle growth lifting context, uh, let's just say doing anything out in the city after 11 o'clock at night is typically poor practice. But do that what you will. You know, like I said, I'm not your dad. Do whatever the hell you want to do. So, it's not, well, it's not too late. So I think the gym may be kind of full. Maybe not too... Eh, we'll see. Whatever. It's not Monday, so I don't anticipate all the chest machines being taken. It's, uh... What do you think? Obviously Monday, National Chest Day. What do you think people are hitting on Saturday the most? Who gives a shit? Let's just get in there. Three plates... Feels all right. Now I'm not looking for trouble. I'm not looking to stir anything up. I don't want to re-tweak anything. So these are going to be light. Well, not light, but these are going to be controlled reps. I'm not going to be so nuts with it yet. Because like, you got to remember, if you're moving weight quick, I could do three plates real slow. And if you had basically like a force sensor or a scale on my hands, it would pretty much read about 315 the whole time. But if I drop it really quick at the bottom to go from have the weight moving down to have it launch back up like in an instant, then the peak weight that that scale would read, it could be upwards of fucking 400. So usually a slower descent is going to be your safer alternative. But it's, that's just lifting jargon. Let's just hit the set. <clears throat> Yeah. <sighs> 
Definitely getting the spot on this next one. Oh my goodness. enough bench let's move on three plates on a 25 feels perfect yeah 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 That was good. The 25s may be a little much. <laughs> Let's get rid of those mofos. One more. Oh, fucking hell, I almost dropped that. Oh. Oh. Make that a drop set. Come Let's go do some cable press. You know, I've been thinking, and I've been thinking this for a while. I don't know if I care for that hammer strength chest press. I get so much front delt that like the amount of chest squeeze I get, I'd be better off coming over here doing cable press. So maybe I gotta keep that in mind in the future. But a few sets of cable presses here bent over, not like an insane amount of weight, but enough for a real good squeeze. Burn out with partials. Probably two or three, a set of flies, and the chest is cooked. Okay. Eh, a little lighter on the next one. Okay. okay. Let's get some flies going and then check the pump. I had cable flies on my mind, but Occupado. So Pectic will be good. I think straight set first, maybe a drop set. <coughs> maybe a drop set next to be determined. Let's just get this first one finished. Oh, 
One more. I think just normal straight set. No. I might do some cable flies. What do you think? What's the over under? Lock your bets in now. Okay, it looks like you were right. One more set of flies. I think maybe a partial drop set. Like first off, it'll be kind of in front of me. Then I might drop the weight, go sort of downward base flies. Either way, I'm gonna finish off with a bulbous pair of bazongas. All right, now we're done, at least with chest. I'm gonna do a little bit of shoulders after. Okay, so how many sets was that? Two sets of bench, two sets of machine press, two sets of cable press, two sets of pec flies, and then a set of cable flies. Nine, that's within range. If, um, so, Look, I don't think there's a specific number that's like the best volume for hypertrophy in terms of your working sets. But if you told me your, your workout consisted of two working sets, I'd say that's a bit low. And if you told me it consisted of like 15 working sets or more, then I might say it's a little bit too high. So for the most part, I kind of think by the time you've done around maybe eight or so, and like that range could vary. I've done lifts where I only did four working sets for a specific body part and the pump was sick and I was super fatigued, but probably around that, you know, five to 12 range. If you can do all your sets hard, know that you got fatigued and finish the workout with a pump, I'd say around that volume range is about the sweet spot. But then again, that's just kind of my, what's the word? Perception. Who cares? Let's focus on this chest bump that we've got right now. Come on. So yeah, hell yeah, man. 315 for reps with no pain. Love it. Not that the weight really matters. I'm not a fucking power lifter. I'm here for muscle growth and fucking, you know, stimulation. But come on. Come on. I'm not so disconnected from the ego feeding capabilities that heavy weight has. I'm trying to work on that, but whatever. That's not something I'm gonna solve this very moment. So let's, um, let's see how we're looking. Just standing, relaxed. <laughs> These things are fucking bigger than normal. That is beyond a doubt. <sighs> I kind of, I like this. I like this side chest better than this one. This is kind of more old school and fun.
Mm. Oh my god. Ooh. There's not really any other chest poses now, is there? Apart from just like, you know, most muscular. Yeesh. So I'm gonna get some shoulders going and then we can come back for a shoulder pump check and get out of here. Oh my God. This, I love this. <laughs> All right, so shoulders. I had some me time. I didn't take you with me, but I'll break down what went down. And if you've seen any of my shoulder days before this one, it's the same shit. It was like four sets of laying face pulls, two, no, no, three sets of like single arm D-handle face pulls. Sometimes I like doing one arm at a time. And then I just played around on the dumbbell rack doing lateral raises. I did a couple sets with the 40s. I did a couple with the 70s, just kind of manhandling it. I did a few single arm with the 40s. I did a few, I know the finisher was like 70s, 55s, 40s. Really just kind of playing around. Not in the sense of like the sets weren't hard, but for me with shoulders, they don't need much, you know? And I think we're about to see that with this fucking shoulder pump. So let's, uh, let's get a glimpse and then get home because I need some god dang food in my system. Pronto. Boy. So, I mean, you tell me. You fucking tell me. Is that, a, is that a set of delts if you've ever seen one? I would most certainly think so. Oh. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. A rear delt poking out way <laughs> behind my trap. I mean, if you kind of look in real close, like right here, it's like a fucking 90 degree angle between trap and rear delt. That is fucking killer. So let's get a lat spread, a back double by, and then we can get in the car. No, oh. no, oh my goodness. Oh. Oh. Fuck. It's even hard for me to get into the pose of a back double by with a, sh with a shoulder pump, just because I have to work my rear delts, like that's what's kind of holding my shoulders in position. So chest, sweet, felt good, nice and strong. Shoulders, bulbous as usual. Need my arms to catch up. That's a good lift. This is a lift where I can get in the car, head towards canes and say, not even say anything, just be in kind of a jolly mood. But let's, uh, let's just get in there, go home, eat, um, I need a new show, man. I need a new fucking show. Urgh. Maybe I'll catch up on One Piece. I'm like 50 episodes behind. Whatever. I'll find something. But let's get out of here. All right, slight pit stop before I got in the car after that pump check. This is a Chipotle right next door. And it's kind of funny because this is my hometown, so... Like all the people that work there they went to my high school so it's always fun seeing them oh and i'm not gonna lie somebody beeping at me oh no my, i got squeaky brakes Yeesh. but uh yeah i swear i get special treatment not even just from the social media side but if you walk into a gym or no no if you walk into a a chipotle and you're kind of a bigger dude i swear they give you extra. They give you extra. They know. They know you're a big dog and must just be hospitality kicking in. Because these tacos, I've noticed as years have, uh, as the years have passed, they've gradually gotten more and more full. So go to order. It's always soft tacos with rice, queso, cheese, usually steak. Today they were out. So chicken, but that will be a solid meal. Plus, I got like a Sprite in a, another Izzy. It's basically just a fucking soda. So that's another about 100 grams of carbs as a sugars, which post-workout, 
I'd say that is your best or the most useful time to consume simple carbs, aka sugars, sweets. Because post-workout, that's when you're going to be most prone to actually using a quick-acting carb source efficiently. You know, you just burned off a shit ton of glycogen, aka you just tired out your muscles, you used up some carbs, converting some shit to ATP and whatever else goes on at the molecular level. But to put it into bro science terms, your muscles, their gas tanks have depleted. I'm not gonna say they're totally empty, but they're not full. So post-workout, you wanna fill those mofos back up. And simple carbs is the best way to do it. Now, I'm not saying you should only eat Skittles for all, you know, however many hundreds of cam hundreds of cams, hundreds of grams of carbs that you're eating per day. But you know, post workout and yeah, pre workout too. That's when you'll get the most out of it for sure. So now I just get to go home and chill. I definitely gotta shower off. Oh, I don't know why. Sometimes I just feel like I have a dirty sweat. Like I'm not stanking, but I just kind of feel feel icky. Ugh. I want to get nice and clean, but either way, solid pump. Felt nice and strong. Yeah, I think I've eased it back into heavy pressing at a good rate, right? Because you got to think. Here's the situation which I'm kind of facing, or which anybody's facing whenever they pull a muscle to the point where you actually have to take legit action to. Like, back up and not hurt yourself again. So, left, pe left pec pulled. Uh, I, I looked back exactly three weeks ago. And on that first few days afterwards, there was no, there was no pressing. Right? Even just kind of flexing, just sitting here, would kind of hurt it. So, it was very prone to re-injury at that period. So, best case scenario... Don't hurt it anymore. Let it chill. Let it kind of, you know, rebuild itself. It was uh, it was kind of like an intramuscular type deal, so it's not like a there's no tendons that had to be reattached. Obviously, if you have something at that level, then your first step is uh, unfortunately hospital. But luckily, it was something minor like this. I just had to take my foot off the brakes. So as it kind of began to recover, right? I've got basically two extremes. I could not use my chest at all for like, I don't know, a month, two months, however long, or I could use it too much and then re-hurt myself, right? Either of those cases I don't think is the best scenario. So obviously re-hurting yourself, that is worse, but getting absolutely no activation in the area, no blood flow, no movement, uh, I just sort of feel like you're going to, it's not like you're going to hurt yourself, but you just kind of become... You're going to become kind of stale. You're going to get kind of stiff in there. You know, you want to, you want to stay moving, right? So even though when I first started getting chess back into the game, uh, I wasn't going extra heavy. I was going moderately light, you know, just enough weight, which I could feel a squeeze and go through the motions of a chest day, but not really have a ton of tension on my chest. Right? And then gradually, after doing that a couple of times, now I'm starting to get into it where today... I could press heavy with no problems. So still want to be cautious, but I am so nosy when it comes to crashes and shit like that. But as I get more into it, right, I feel very comfortable, very comfortable. So I say another month, I won't even fucking notice, but I'm not just going to jump the gun and try to incline bench four plates. Come on. That's ludicrous. That is silly. That's simply asking for trouble. Though I will get some three plates going. Maybe 365 if I feel really solid. But da, 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 da. that's pretty much all the updates for chest. Good chest day. Strong. Not my best pump ever. Uh, and I think that's just to do with the fact that I did not hit my calorie goal yesterday. I was kind of... Um, I had some just normal kind of chore stuff, getting it packed and ready going on. Really, all I'm, that's just me making an excuse, and I was being a fucking asshole to myself and my progress. 
but woke up this morning at 250.8. So one day of not hitting my calorie goal, and that's a two pound drop in morning weight, right? And those two pounds are not muscle, it's not fat, it's, uh, it's just intramuscular carbs and water. So in a bulking state, I wanna be totally full of carbs at all times. You know, like I was just saying, how after a workout, you've kind of diminished your gas tanks, your fuel is a little bit lower than full after you've done a good lift. I wanna refill those mofos. Actually, I wanna overfill them, overflow, such that I'm really in a good surplus and I've got enough energy to deposit some more muscle mass onto my pecs and biceps and legs and back and everywhere in between. So, do not worry. Do not worry. This bulk will not end soon. We are only in the beginning stages. Honestly, it's really only just started to ramp up. The first two months, um, I've said this before, but I'll kind of reiterate it. In my last few bulks, what I've been doing is, obviously I do, well, not maybe not obviously, but what I've been doing is about four month bulking period, four to five months. Actually, the last one was like seven months. That was too long. But, you know, X number of months in a bulk, and then immediately drop my calories into a calorie deficit for like, you know, two months, two and a half months or so, just to kind of you know, offset some of the body fat gains that I got from the last bulk, reset my metabolism, get my appetite back, and then do it all again. But what I've been doing for the last few bulks is going straight from, you know, my two and a half thousand calories, my 3,000 calorie limit that I was putting myself in for the calorie deficit, right, for the cutting phase, and immediately jumping to 5,000 calories for the bulk. So in those last few bulks, I jumped straight up to my fully carb state in like one month. And then this is how the weight sort of progressed. Right, I've got all this shit tracked in like a Google Sheets, or a Google uh, yeah, Sheets, so I'm, I'm always looking at the graphs. And those last bulks have been a very immediate spike, and then a little bit of extra growth over, the, over time, over another month or two, and then I just sort of fizzle out, and I stay the same weight for the rest. So what's that, what that's telling me is I jumped the gun, right? I pushed it too early, because you kind of get used to the calories that you're eating. Right? I'm not saying that you can't keep gaining weight, but in a basic sense, what's going to happen is once you've been eating a certain amount of calories for long enough, that's going to become your maintenance in a way. Right? So if I were to just eat 4,000 calories, you know, eventually I'd get to a point where I'm not gaining any more weight. And that's what I've got to change, the amount of calories that I'm eating. So I've got to up it, you know, 4,500. And then once I'm not gaining any more weight on four and a half thousand, I'll up it's five. And then maybe five and a half, and then up to six. But the last few bulks, I kind of jumped the gun because I'm extra hungry during the beginning of the bulk. And two months of five, six thousand calories, and then I've got nowhere to go. So I think that's why I have a good initial phase, but then I just can't keep up with it. You know, for me to get into like the 7,000 calorie range, that's not feasible. I can't do it, which may sound like an excuse and maybe I'm just being a baby, but if you're actually doing 6,000, you know, even 5,000 calories on a consistent basis per day, that is a lot of food. That is a lot of food. And a lot of people say, I hear this all the time, like, oh, I'm doing X amount of calories. You're probably not actually tracking it. If you're really tracking 5,000, that's a heap of food. Uh, so for me, that's getting up in the range of like, a, it's tricky for me to eat more than that. So that's why for this bulk, for the last, you know, two-ish months, honestly, like two and a half months, I've kind of been easing into it. I didn't jump straight to my 5,000 calorie whatever. I was kind of floating around three and a half thousand. And, you know, getting into the fours a couple of days. But really the first month was pretty much just eating as much as I was hungry for. And then next month, a little more than that. Next month, a little. And now we're getting up into actually, you know, what I would call bulk calories. So I'm in the 5,000, just floating around 5,000. Sometimes 5.2, sometimes 4.8, but 
basically five. So I'm going to keep that up for the next month or so. And then, you know, once I think, all right, we got to we got to start depositing some more weight, then, you know, get up in the five and a half range. So that's sort of, uh, I feel like that's kind of why this bulk has been a bit of a, a slow start relative to the last few that I've done. You know, I didn't just jump straight to that fully carved up gnarly look right from the beginning. I'm kind of easing into it. So that's uh, if you were curious. But bulking, cutting, maintaining, make sure you're training hard. That is the one factor which overarchingly covers every lifter of any demographic's progress. And this is something which I think people kind of... I don't want to... What's the word I'm trying to say here? Maybe underestimate, undervalue, but in no way imaginable will you ever get less results by going harder. I mean, it's just a fucking impossibility, right? Now look, if you're a goddamn marathon runner, David Goggins... You know, 100 miles in one sitting, yeah, guess what? You're probably going to get rhabdo, right? You're going to be burning muscle because you're legitimately overtraining. But if you're a 20-something-year-old dude and you've been lifting considerably, <laughs> you cannot overtrain, right? If you're in the gym for three hours because for whatever reason you're doing way, like you're doing a ton of volume per muscle group, like if you were to go into the gym and do... 30 sets of chest or 40 sets of chest in one sitting, then I'm, I may think you're doing a little bit much. Like that's more volume than I would say is necessary for some muscular stimulation. Right? But if you're doing 8, 10 sets per body part, it will only improve your results to push those sets as hard as you possibly can. And the fact that some people kind of comment like, should I really be training that hard? Should I really try to take every set to failure? You know, I just kind of said this in another video, but I really got to say it again. It's <laughs> how easy do you think it is to go to fucking failure, man? Even when you've hit as many reps as you could do, like even when I do a set of, let's say a set of curls with something heavy, whatever, 50s, 70s, something, all right? I get 10 reps and like that last rep, oh, it's a real fucking grinder. And I'm like, I can barely do it. And I got to put it down. If you were to strap electrodes onto my bicep, right, you could zap it into doing probably another three reps. You've only got so much control over how hard you can exert your fucking muscles. Now, that's something you do improve over time as a lifter, right? I can push myself harder relatively now than I could as a beginner. That is kind of a skill you do develop. But in no way do I think anybody is going to do... You know, an eight set workout for chest and if they push every set to the fucking max failure with some partials and like maybe some assisted reps you're not gonna burn muscle doing that man it's I think that is sort of born out of um, a lot of the science based sort of you know, lifting videos that we see preached a lot because they say a lot of the times like you know, leave three reps in reserve. It's still an effective set, right? Don't go to failure all the time. Uh, dude, come on. Think about, in a lot of cases, honestly, you can kind of use this sort of analogy to look at all sorts of different arguments just in life. But take things to the extreme, you know? So there's two extremes when it comes to doing working sets. There is zero work being done, which means... You don't even fucking do a set, obviously. You're going to get no results. There's no stimulus. Or you push a set as hard as you fucking physically can. Which extreme is going to give you better results? What do you think, man? Come on. So that's, uh, That comment just kind of gets to me. When I see, well, you shouldn't really train that hard. That is insane. I can't even... I mean, I said this... I'm, I'm just a broken record now repeating myself, but I can't even wrap my head around that mentality. Right, come on. Push it 
as hard as you fucking can. And I'm not saying that like every set that I do, I'm pushing as hard as I can. I know that sometimes I have sets where I rack the weight too early and I had more in the tank. And that kind of disappoints me. So I'm trying to improve that constantly. Right? Every time I have a really good lift, like most of the pressing today, obviously today wasn't my craziest chest day, but you know, whenever I have a really good lift and the majority of my sets I seriously pushed hard and I know it, then I'm like, that's sick. I want it to be like this all the time. And if I have like a leg day where I re-rack a set of squats too early, or you know, I kind of pussy out on leg extensions and I, I stop even though I maybe had like three or four reps left, in my mind I'm like, fuck. Come on, man. Like, right? So, it's not that I'm saying this from a point of uh, absolute. You get know what I'm saying, right? This, that's the bar you should hold yourself to. And I think if you can manage to do that, then over time, the more good lifts you have, that's going to motivate you to do them again. And whenever you have bad lifts, that should kind of be a little bit of a trigger for you to say, oh, shit, I got to get real. I gotta, I really gotta take it up a notch. So, I think that's enough as I can muster in terms of a post-workout speech. Oh man, I'm hungry. So, home, food, more food, pack all my clothes, go back to school, cardio in the morning. I don't know, that's, I didn't say that in the right order. Home, food, clothes, sleep, cardio, and then back to school back to the packed ass rec center hopefully it's not too packed but either way ideally you're doing your cardio lifting hard eating your protein counting your macros come on we all know this sort of shit so i will see you next time